Chairman Grassley, Ranking Member Feinstein, members of the committee. My name is Eric Olson. I'm the District Attorney in Stafford County, Virginia. District Attorneys are called Commonwealth Attorneys in Virginia, and after 22 years as an Assistant Prosecutor, I was elected the Commonwealth Attorney in 2011. I've been on the Board of Directors of the National District Attorney Association since 2008, and I serve as the Chairman of our Training and Education Committee. I was hired in 1989 to be Stafford's Prosecutor for Child Abuse and domestic violence cases. Back then, child sexual abuse was often underreported and frequently not even investigated. Almost 30 years ago, my former boss had the foresight to see that specialization was the key to bringing the criminal justice system's dark secret into the open, the secret that children were being abused and we weren't doing enough about it. The 1990s was a watershed decade in child protection. State legislatures and the U.S. Congress enacted significant measures aimed at both protecting children from abuse and giving law enforcement the tools and the resources to, t to detect it and hold offenders accountable. It was the perfect combination of state and federal cooperation. That decade saw the enactment of the Violence Against Women Act. That was 1994. It saw the establishment of the first child advocacy centers in cities across the country. It saw the enactment of mandatory reporting laws requiring teachers, professionals, caregivers to report suspected abuse. And it saw the establishment of multi, the multidisciplinary approach to child abuse investigations. These advances completely changed our approach to reports of child sexual abuse, and to a large extent, the catalyst for that change was this body, the U.S. Congress. Why is that the case? How do you explain the fact that in a system that thrives on partisanship, a deliberative body is able to enact legislation and steer a system of 50 different philosophies in a single direction. The answer, it seems, is quite simple. In order to live up to our role as the world's greatest democracy, we've come to realize that we must protect our children. That universal truth has guided this body for generations, and over the last 30 years, the strides taken, the laws enacted, and the funding provided has brought protection and comfort to countless children. Unfortunately, that success has been tempered with the challenges of growing population and advances in technology. The advent of digital photography and the Internet has brought child exploitation to the computer screen and, in my opinion, has been responsible for an increase in incidents of child sexual abuse. Doesn't, this doesn't suggest that I'm critical of the advances that we've made. I just point this out, that as we constantly seek ways to protect children, new challenges arise. Today, let me address the one challenge that brings us all together, the sexual abuse scandal surrounding USA Gymnastics. If proven true, and it, it, there's no question that it is true, uh, just hearing these incredible women um, tell their story, uh, the reports have a, of abuse have a familiar ring. Individuals associated with a major sports entity, that entity entrusted by parents for the care and nurturing of their children, who then go on to abuse that trust. This is not the first time it's happened, and although painful to admit, it likely won't be the last. But just as past scandals have shown, and just as child welfare workers and detectives and prosecutors have observed for decades, as secretive as child sexual abuse is, in so many cases, adults see, adults hear, adults suspect, and adults know. Yet even today, in too many cases, a report is never even made. I encourage this body to consider and enact whatever legislation can address this code of silence that seems to descend when adults hear or suspect child abuse. Stated simply, we can't combat this type of exploitation if we don't know about it. NDA has reviewed and is supportive of Ranking Member Feinstein's bill, the Protecting Young Victims from Sexual Abuse Act of 2017. There is, however, one suggestion that I would like to offer related to this specific legislation. From the efforts of this Congress over the last 30 years, local child welfare agencies and local law enforcement agencies have been given the tools to immediately respond to reports of child abuse. In all accredited agencies, a comprehensive and multidisciplinary approach is taken the minute a report is received. I encourage you to continue to rely on the existing systems in states across the country, and if you expand the federal system of mandatory reporting to ensure that an immediate report is made to local authorities as well as federal authorities in those dual jurisdiction cases. I suggest this because we're well positioned to respond in the way the public expects us to respond. It's what we do every day. I thank you for the opportunity to address the committee, and I assure you that those of us on the front lines are prepared to assist in any way we can to prevent the abuse of our young athletes. We will protect, we will investigate, 
and if the unspeakable occurs, we will hold offenders accountable. Thank you.